All right, the last activity that we've really completed is this last week, 3-7 was a two-parter, where on one day you folks gathered information about a Holocaust topic, and on the second day you and your groups who were assigned the topic presented your information. So this idea of presenting information, speaking in front of others, how is that preparing you for your formal book discussion of your EA? Once you've got your purpose statement written down, you can take a look at the class bookmark and you can copy how 37 helps you practice concepts that your book discussion will be graded on. If you can't see it, you can just listen in. 37 practice 7 out of the 10 concepts. So 37 has you practice concepts 2 through 8. So you practice concept 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, and eight. It ran the gamut there. <laughs> Once you've got your bookmark all filled in, you can put that away. And you folks are going to need two items. First, I'm going to have you take a springboard, open it to 183. Second, I want you to go ahead and pull out your green handout from yesterday. Actually, you guys didn't have your green hand up. My apologies. I want you to go ahead and pull out the work that you completed, that separate sheet. If you had transferred that info to a Google Doc, you were told to bring that information in today. So go ahead and pull that out. If you don't have it, you might have to finagle it a different way somehow. And I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so this activity was having you practice a couple of concepts here. Or not concepts, but um, a few little focal points. You're researching the Holocaust individual, whether they were a victim or a perpetrator, and then you were to write and prepare a narrative. So the second part, you folks are going to be presenting that narrative to a partner in your group. You're not going to be reading it aloud in front of the class. You're just going to practice reading it to someone within your group today. So the next step that I'm going to have you do is actually turn to page 185. And if you have a highlighter, go ahead and pull that out. <laughs> Once you get partnered up, or if you end up in a group of three, someone is going to be grading you based on your reading with five different elements of speaking. So what we're going to do first is kind of go over each element, what's going to make that element something valid for a proficient score, and what would make it an emerging score. So it's not going to show on the screen, but I'm going to ask you to do the following. Above that proficient column, write the letters A through C, and above emerging, D through F. <laughs> Proficient means that your score could be a C, a letter grade of a C or higher. Emerging, your letter grade is either a D or an F. Something that needs serious work to get a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, each one of these elements, we're just going to break it down and highlight the key info within each component. So the first element, enunciation, is how words are pronounced. So when your partner is listening to you, he or she is going to look for a couple of things. One, is your enunciation clear? Two, is it correct or as correct as it can be? Three, is it effective? Now, none of us here, I believe, are fluent German speakers or fluently speak Yiddish. I could be wrong. But when they're looking at the words that you may have copied in your story, 
or when you're getting ready to speak about between shades of gray and we see these terms, if you don't know how to pronounce them, that's okay. But own it. Make it up. Make people believe that you're right. That's the best thing that I can tell you, the best advice for it. Don't allow yourself to stumble. Just go, yeah, that's how I say it. And work with it. Okay? Second element is going to be pitch. Pitch is how high your voice can range or how low it can range. So, for example, most women have a higher pitch. Most men have a lower pitch. So, for you to get a proficient score here, you have to be doing a variety of pitches. Enhance the listener's understanding. But in the same regard, don't be a distraction. If you start sounding silly, that can become a distraction, and that could start hurting you negatively. All right, third element, volume, <laughs> the idea of being loud or soft. So even a proficient score, there should be a variation in your volume. <clears throat> it may not be a consistent, huge variation, but it has to be noticeable, and it has to be correct in what it is you're speaking about. Tempo is the fourth element. Tempo is how fast, how slow your speech is being paced. Getting a proficient score means that you are being appropriate in your tempo. Each one of you has a natural rhythm and a natural tempo in your conversation voice and in your speaking voice. Most people can tell when something's going on with your tempo that shouldn't be. So do your best to keep your tempo at that appropriate place. If someone's nervous, generally their voice is going to sound nervous and get a little bit quicker. If they're angry, it tends to get a little slower. And that last element is phrasing, the idea of pausing or emphasizing words at certain points. Proficient score, you should hear some specified phrasing, but again, it needs to be an enhancement, not a distraction. So you've got to make sure that you're pretty specific there. Your goal today is to really hit all of those proficient areas. You want to do the best to be in that proficient area, whether it's A-worthy, B-worthy, C-worthy, you want to get in there. You want to stay away from someone marking that, you know what, you're kind of monotone, or you're quiet, or that girl is supposed to together, well, funny, it doesn't really work. It's starting to become a distraction. You want to see in that, okay? So next step that I'm going to have you do is I'm going to allow you some time to prepare so that you can speak your narratives aloud. I'm going to give you exactly 10 minutes. In these 10 minutes, I want you to tackle one of the two tasks that you see up there, or you might be able to get to both. First, make sure that you, one, have your narrative, and two, make sure that you If you have all those materials, that's reading this piece aloud. So if you need to go through it a couple of times, go for it. All right, are there any questions before I set you loose to prepare? Mm -hmm. I right, think so go ahead and you have 10 minutes. Okay, so you've had 10 minutes to kind of prepare. Most of you were just reading your work aloud, which is fantastic. We're going to get you moving on to the next component. If you haven't already, I left some half sheets at your family's table. So if you could take those half sheets, make sure each member at your table has one. Extra if you can leave at the front. Please don't write your name on it until I tell you where it's going to be on. I'm going to talk you through how our next process is going to be. So how are we going to be presenting these pieces in partners? You're, again, not going to be reading this piece aloud in front of everybody. It's just you working with a partner in your group. If you need to work within a small group of three because your numbers are odd instead of even, that's okay. Just make sure that every single person is getting a response or getting graded. Okay? So you can either watch the screen or listen in as to how it's going to work. You folks are going to be working with two rounds of five minutes apiece. So something needs to happen with a, within a five-minute increment. And if you finish up prior to the five minutes, awesome. But don't move ahead until you hear that chime. All right? Now, what needs to happen in that five minutes is three things. It does say to read your story twice. Some of you have really long stories, so reading it twice wouldn't be an option for you. If you have a relatively short piece, 
I would suggest that you read it twice, once for the listener or your partner to really understand what's the base of the story, and the second for them to grade it. But if your work is relatively long, maybe just decide, okay, we're just going to go with the grade right now. Okay, that can be your decision right there. So the last thing that needs to happen in the five minute time frame, your partner needs to grade your work using that little half sheet, and then you're going to talk about what you could do to make it better and to improve upon it. All right, let's talk about that half sheet, how it's going to work. I want you to go ahead and write your name down as the name of listener. Again, write your name as the name of listener. Once you've kind of decided who your partner is going to be, you'll write their name as the speaker. Now, eventually, this form that you have, it won't be yours. You'll pass it to the person who you were grading it or whose work you were grading. Okay? I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to kind of make sure, okay, I've got my partner. We're ready to go. Once you see the timer start ticking down from five minutes, that's kind of your heads up of, okay, it's time for one. Let's get through this process. Right, any questions before I give you that little time frame to get ready to go? All right, guys, you got 30 seconds before the timer starts. <laughs> All right, so at this point, you should have been able to get through your story and another person's story. If you're in a group of three, don't worry, you still have time. So if you need a third person that still needs to get through their story, get the grading done, you'll get that. If you could stop talking, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next step, what I want you to do, if you haven't already, I want you to take that half sheet and give it to the person whose work you graded so that they have their own personal grade in front of them. Once you have your form, the one that has your personal grade from your partner, I want you to flip it over to the back side. And I'm going to have you answer four pretty simple questions. I'm going to read through them as well. What category were you the best at for number one? So that's talking about which element. So were you better with your pitch, with your volume, and how do you know? Second question, what category or element do you need to work on the most? Third, how do you think you're going to be able to improve this skill? And fourth, if I were to grade you today on your read aloud, what grade do you think you would receive overall, letter grade? And how do you know? Once you've taken care of those four questions, you're going to want to use the stapler. I'm going to ask you to staple that half sheet to the back of your work, and you're going to turn it in. If you have an electronic copy, I'm going to ask you to email it to my email on that blue form on the back resources board, and you'll just turn in the half sheet that you have. After a couple minutes pass, I'll put up a new screen telling you what to do once you've finished all of this, okay? 